I'm going to go get my headphones. <laughs> I forgot. Do I have the channels now? Mm -hmm. Hi, people are coming. This is exciting. I love that we can come together still. Mm -hmm. It's a huge blessing. And you're still coming. That's also a blessing. <laughs> Well, I'm going to go ahead and get uh, started a little bit anyway, for right now. Um, I'm excited about today. There's so many things um, for today that we have going on for you. But first, I learned that it was Maylie's birthday. So, I mean, we have to then say happy birthday because she's here with us. <laughs> And so I thought we can unmute, everybody can unmute, we can just sing happy birthday in our own languages. Yes. Because it's important. It's a wonderful day. Celebrate, Maylee. Yeah. So unmute. So everybody unmute and we will sing happy birthday first to start off. Happy birthday to you. 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 Happy the loved one. We we love celebrating everybody, um, and I love when it's a birthday. It's such a significant thing, um, life, right? So I'm glad you chose to still be with us on your birthday. Well, today, thanks for everyone for coming. It's been so uh, great to see um, the work that you're starting to bring in, uh, turn in. Uh, because for us, it's just exciting to see what you're learning, mm. nice. to see how you're coming to greater understanding on things, to see you putting into practice what we've been talking about, and we will continue to build. Mm -hmm. So do we don't want to just do something and then leave it behind, but we want to continue to build. So these things that you have started we're going to keep using them and we're going to keep building um, and we're going to keep taking steps forward. And so we're also going to be doing that again today. I think Lisa set us a good foundation uh, in our last session. And as we were looking at today, we want to continue to practice, continue to process what we are doing and what we're learning. Mm -hmm. um, we can get more and more and more information, but really the most important thing is that we understand what we're getting and that we can use it. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so today we want to take a little bit more time to make sure mm -hmm. that our foundations are firm before we start building on mm -hmm. top of that. Okay. And so the way we're going to start, Lisa's going to again start with us. She's going to bridge into again um, a little bit more of what she started in our last session. Mm -hmm. And then Melinda is going to do some more practical ways of looking at what we're learning. And then we're going to go as we feel led by the Holy Spirit and as he leads and teaches us today. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hand that off to Lisa. So my friends, you remember our 
our core goal from the Lord in the scriptures is to disciple the nations, isn't it? It, it isn't to become well-informed people, <laughs> familiar with all the Bible passages. Our goal is, is an action goal. Our goal has an outcome. Are the nations discipled? What do we do to disciple them? Isn't that right? And that the strategy God gave us is the university of the nations with the seven colleges that, well, now there's more getting more and more um, definition to our strategy for our task. And, and so we are learning, rethinking, strengthening the connections between our individual training courses and, and the ultimate goal, which is bringing transformation through discipleship to the nations. So let's go back to our cityscape that Anna used with us, reminding ourselves, what is it that we're doing? You see the city that she's holding up? And, and so if that's our goal, our goal isn't finishing a course, <laughs> our goal is transforming that city. And, and the one little guy there, she asked us the question, how do you disciple a city? And, and so feeling like, well, one person at a time isn't going to make a big impact. One, one sphere at a time, one vocation at a time, looking at all the different voices and uh, avenues that we have to impact individuals and spheres. So let's, let's go a little deeper in that. Think to yourself, where, where do you live? Okay, I want you to get in your mind's eye where you live and your front door, okay? And together, I want you to walk out that front door and I want you to start walking toward, um, I don't know if you live close to the YWAM base, if you walk to the YWAM base, if you walk to your church, if you walk to your friend's house, some, some place that you're gonna walk through your city Okay, you, you have a goal in mind? Okay, you're at your front door? <laughs> okay, now, as you start walking, I want you to think about all of the different things you are passing by. And I guess most of you live in, a, in some kind of a town or, or village. And so you're walking along, what do you see? Do you see a cafe? Put, put your hand up. If, if there's a cafe as you're walking along, okay, maybe, maybe that quarter mile. Do you see a cafe? Do you see a little shop, perhaps? Anybody see a little shop? Okay. Yeah, maybe you see a little uh, internet store or a printing store. Maybe... Maybe you see a stand that has all kinds of fruits or whatnot. As you're walking, as you walk past each of those little locations, I want you to start thinking about all of the vocations that are represented in that one business, that one place of activity. Okay, so for example, let's think about the cafe. What is represented to make that cafe work? What are all of the vocations that are involved? Okay, put it in the chat. What can you think of? All the different vocations. For example, someone had to grow the coffee, didn't they? So coffee grower. <laughs> okay, so start putting in the chat. What are all of the salesperson? Mm -hmm. The workers, campesinos. Mm -hmm. What else? Think of all the different professions. An accountant, someone who does the books, a barista. Mm -hmm. What else? Truck drivers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else? Good. 
Not sure what all those things are, but <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Anything else? And customers, perhaps that's been mentioned. Good. Electricians. Yeah. Just stop and go, wow. <laughs> There's a lot of vocations right there, isn't there? <laughs> okay, and, and so I want you to go into your small groups and I want you together to make a list like we just made, okay? And I want you to keep walking down the street, go at least a full block in your city, okay? Or a quarter mile if you're out in a village that is quite spread out. And at each location, I want you to stop and I want you to think of, you know, at least five different vocations that are involved in making that location uh, work. OK, so you should have a list on your jam pad in your small group of so many different vocations. OK, does that make sense? Is that clear? OK. Five minutes. <laughs> Let's see. And at the end, count and come back with a total. How many did you come up with? Can I start the rooms, right? See you in five minutes. Gente, quando faltar quatro minutos e meio, vou mandar um aviso para vocês contarem quantas profissões vocês conseguiram listar, tá bom? Então, presta atenção e bom trabalho. Eifra, conseguiu aí? Institutions are made up of people and the influence they have on the way the institution works, the messages it puts out, the values and priorities, all of those things. So I'm waiting for Waiting for Claudia's group to post. They must really have a lot. <laughs> so I'm, as we're thinking about this and thinking about what is our ultimate goal, it's to transform our communities as, as people through vocations to influence the spheres. Because all of those our, our voices to change the mind, to change the heart, to bring communities into the blessing of God's ways, connecting with God personally. So now what we'd like you to do to bring your thinking down even further is you're going to go back into your small groups and you're going to take all of the vocations you identified and you're going to sort them into which sphere they belong to, okay? Which sphere of society does each one belong to? Oh, group two came up with 18. Well done, group eight, group two. I think our, our winners were the ones that had 21. Good job, group six. <laughs> It'll take them the longest to do this assignment, won't it? So on your jam pad, we want you to make a, a little note of each sphere and then drag and drop the vocations that belong to that sphere into um, your screen. So I will show you a sample. Okay, so um, uh, the sphere of economics and the arts and communication and religion, okay. So you're gonna set your jam pad up like this. And then next to it, you're gonna drag and drop all of the um, vocations. So your vocation might be uh, a banker. Uh, it might be somebody who grows the coffee. 
It might be the barista. Okay, they're all part of the business or economic sphere, isn't it? So I would take those locations and I would put them up next to the word economics. Okay, now communication and media, maybe I would list here the graphic designer and the printer. Well, the printer would be in the business, wouldn't it? Maybe there's somebody playing the guitar at the coffee shop. So you put the musician there. So you're going to sort out all of your vocations into the sphere that they belong to. Okay. Are there any questions about that? Any instructions from How many Karina? minutes? Mm -hmm. Just how many minutes? Five um, or less? Yes. Five? Yeah, okay. five minutes is. Okay, so let's go. See you soon, guys. Okay. Do you think everybody knows how to um, screen share? Could they, or can we see the jam pad? It'd be nice to just get a quick visual scoop through of what everybody's done. I think so. The only thing is I need to know who is sharing so I can make a co-host. Like there was an option where you could yes. let anybody share. I'm just that... changing here. Okay. Okay, well, I'd like to give us all the chance to see dar, what the jam pads look like. So if each group leader, what what are the instructions, Carlina? Should each group leader screen share? Is yeah. that what you want? They okay. can just screen share. Okay, good. So you're the group leader, if you could screen share the jam pad of how your group uh, put the vocations into the different spheres. We'll just do it for maybe 30 seconds for each one so we have a chance to look. So group one, could you show yours? Só uma coisa. <risos> que a Karen está me ajudando, né? Com o Jumpad. Aí, se ela puder compartilhar a tela dela. Tá, tá todo mundo liberado para compartilhar. Okay. Então, okay. Vamos só compartilhar a tela de boa que vai aparecer. Now I do. I forgot every time we come out of a group, we have to put our interpretation back in. <risos> ok. Interesting. Do nosso grupo. Ficou mais Excellent. evidente a economia. É... Uh -huh. <risos> o governo, uh -huh. comunicação e arte. Uh -huh. Great. Good. Thanks. Actually, we're, we're done. We can go on to group two. Go ahead and show us um, what you did. Good job, group one. Group two. Do we do we know who the group leader is from group two? It's Laís. É o grupo da Laís. Laís pediu para compartilhar, só que é, deu aqui um erro no meu computador que eu preciso fazer uma, uma atualização de privacidade para compartilhar. Quem é 
Eu não sei se eu consigo agora. Ok. Should we, should we come back? Should we do group three? Ok. Go ahead, group three. Eu vou... Vai para o grupo três, que eu vou tentar aqui também. Aqui estamos em grupo três. Ok. Yeah. Group yeah. three, how about yours? Okay. Let's have a look. So, um, here we found... We... We were talking a lot, so we didn't find a lot of uh, vocations. Mm. But um, from those vocations, those eight, we put it into the sphere of education. Mm. Uh, that is like uh, the boss, or mm. um, I don't know how to say gerente in, in, in English. That is kind of the boss. He has to, to teach others uh, their work. And then the sphere of economy is where everyone is uh, set. Because mm -hmm. the agriculture, the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, mm -hmm. the driver, the, dis yeah. the the people that distribute all these, those who sell and those who, who buy mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. all of them in the sphere of economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. So the idea that the, the ultimate boss is an educator uh, is an interesting one. That informal education And you're right, that is a role that he has in his uh, business. So he's operating within the sphere of economics, but his role is serving in some respects as an educator. So that was nice thinking. Okay, uh, group four, let's see your screen. Ah, sim. Uhum. Todo mundo está liberado, Diana. Sure. Agora, caso uhum. algum grupo está com problema de computador, me avisa e eu posso ajudar vocês compartilhando, tá bem? Mas você está liberada, sim, Diana. Beleza. I know it takes extra time to use the technology this way, but we hope that it's giving you some experience in how you can use the online for your own training. Entendi. Tenta ver se você consegue. Vamos ao grupo 5, depois o grupo 6, e aí a gente volta para o 2 e o 4. Se vocês não conseguirem, eu posso compartilhar. Tá bem? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Good. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> group 5 loves the visual. Whoever that leader is, is a uh, visual learner, I think. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Excellent. I guess no one has been walking by churches. <laughs> We're not seeing anyone in the religious sphere. Good. Excellent. Good job, group five. Okay, how about group six? Hum. Nós demos uma voltinha só hum. na área comercial mesmo. Uhum. Nice. Wow. Well done. Ok, do we want to, is it possible to see groups three and four, or is that technology just not cooperating? Hum. Vamos ver, Laís vai tentar compartilhar, depois Jana tenta, qualquer coisa eu posso compartilhar delas. No nosso... Ok, vocês estão conseguindo ver? Oh, there it is. Aha. 
Oh, I love those visuals. I'm looking for visuals actually with the, um, in another project I'm doing. So I'm looking very right. carefully at what you chose. É, no nosso grupo também foi mais para Lovely. Mm -hmm. Ixi, sua voz está cortando lá. Hein? Nice. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, did you pass a church? Is that why you said the pastor? Yes. Okay. So if you're passing a church, there's 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 lots of other vocations involved in the sphere of church, isn't there? There's probably Sunday school teachers and Bible teachers and youth workers, evangelists. Uh, they, there's um, people that maintain the building, maybe the printer for the Bibles and the uh, the musicians that perform, maybe those aren't full-time paid vocations, but they're all roles within uh, the community of a church. So thinking to ourselves, I, how, how, let's say, let me ask the question, as we've done this activity, what, what's something that you're learning? What, what is a takeaway for you from going through this exercise. You can go ahead and just speak. You don't have to put it in the chat. Just a couple of you. A gente não vai ver o grupo 3 só para para finalizar. Oh, I'm sorry. I totally forgot. Thank you. Group 3. You are absolutely right. Nós outros já compartimos. Nossa, é o 4. É o 4, desculpa. Ah. Carlinha, tá dando alguma coisa de... para eu ir na... nas configurações ah. de segurança e privacidade, mas eu não tô encontrando. Você eu consegue vou compartilhar encontrar? então para vocês. Só um minutinho. Obrigada. Tela certa? Ok, there we go. Nice, wow. Got some pictures in there. Oh, I love how you did that. Wow, nice job. Quer falar um pouquinho, Diana? É, a hum. gente, como maioria, né? Eu acho que quando a gente vai pensando pelo caminho, a gente pensa hum. muito sobre a economia, né? É algo que chama muita atenção. Hum. Lojas e cafés e os trabalhadores hum. que estão ali exercendo sua função. Né, seja consertando alguma coisa, seja construindo alguma coisa. Uhum. Uhum. Mas aí uhum. depois a gente também começou a pensar, e o Ulisses até frisou uma coisa importante, o quanto no Brasil a gente tem muitas igrejas, né? A gente tem uma, um número considerável de uhum. igrejas, e acho que quase todos em seu caminho uhum. passam por alguma igreja. E aí a gente também se lembrou das escolas. Yeah. E... <risos> Eu não consegui colocar, né? É muito rápido, cinco minutos, mas a gente lembrou também dos policiais, né? Dos seguranças e dos prefeitos, uh -huh. yes. dos governantes uh -huh. de uma cidade. Uh -huh. E como Excellent. eu moro numa cidade pequena, em um quilômetro eu consigo passar por quase tudo isso. Mas é... E artes eu lembrei muito também da, da pracinha, né? Por ser uma cidade turística, Tem muitas pessoas vendendo as suas uhum, artes na praça, uhum. né? Então, uhum, uhum. então, a gente não conseguiu colocar tudo que a gente falou, uhum. mas basicamente girou em torno da economia e algumas coisas particulares de, de cada região. Mas foi isso. Uhum. Great. Good job. Excellent. Yeah, and again, the more we think about it, the wider the circle gets, doesn't it? Think about all the musicians that are performing the music that everybody's listening to. <laughs> all of the graphic designers for all of the big uh, advertisements that we're all looking at. Uh, so we see there's lots of media and the arts that 
that maybe aren't located in one place, but they surround us and have such strong influence, don't they? So good, good thinking, everybody. Has every group had a chance to display now? I think so, but I want to make sure. Okay. So back to the question, what, what have you noticed? What are you learning as you reflect on this activity? There's our cityscape with our guy up there, Melinda and Anna are showing us, reminding ourselves. What are you noticing? This is what's something you're noticing. That we have uh, an approach to everyone, that we're approached to everyone, that we are mm. uh, in the middle of the, yeah, of the, all the spheres and we are very near from, yeah, we can, we can reach easily mm. every sphere because we are, you know, close just in the next, mm. right mm. to the next. Yeah, mm. Mm. yeah that's true. I hadn't even thought about that as a takeaway. Yeah, they're all right there, aren't they? <laughs> Good. What else? What's something um, else you're noticing? For hmm. me, it was like uh, the importance of recognize the that the professions that the people do belongs to a sphere. Mm. So mm. sometimes it just saw the people doing things, but I didn't mm -hmm. think, oh, mm -hmm. these people belong to this sphere, these mm -hmm. people do this profession. So I think it's important to recognize where mm -hmm. they belong and what is their role. So okay. that is also help us to understand them and help mm -hmm. them. So I think that for me mm -hmm. was very mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Nice, Natalia. Glad to hear it. Go ahead. Anybody else? I was key. <laughs> Eu acho que me instiga a ser, a perceber mais profundamente quem está ao meu redor, né? É, no lugar onde eu moro é numa hum. rodovia. Então, o tempo inteiro passa muito caminhão, muito caminhoneiro. Hum. E na à frente uhum. da minha casa tem um posto de gasolina. E um pouquinho mais à frente, é, seguindo a rodovia, tem um, um lugar, um local de freiras, né? E, e do outro lado da rodovia tem um local de, de plantação de flores. Então, é, é muito diversificado, mas hum. me hum. faz perceber. Hum. Eu nunca tinha percebido dessa maneira de, de saber que eles estão inseridos nessas áreas e que eu posso perceber eles de forma intencional, né? Acho que é isso. Me abri os olhos para ver o todo ao meu redor. Hum. Hum. Good. Good. So just to, in summary, um, it, it maybe helps open our eyes to evangelism. <laughs> Who, who's around me? How am I reaching out to all of these people involved in business? How am I reaching out? You can do uh, general evangelism for everybody on your street. And that's good. Thinking about particular vocations and particular spheres and thinking, how, how do I reach them where they are and who they are? So that's part of the Great Commission, isn't it? That everybody hears the gospel. And then the, the part of the university training that every nation is discipled, that every sphere has that influence, that shaping shaping the people, shaping the values, shaping the message, the practices that each sphere influences. And so helping us think, what sphere am I equipping someone to serve into? What place does that sphere take in a community? What kinds of people am I preparing them to influence? What kind of skills and knowledge and character do my students need in my school to take their place in that sphere, in a community? So, so we're trying to keep refining our thinking so that, so that we have those clear goals in mind. You remember throwing the paper at nothing, throwing the paper at the wall, and throwing the paper to hit that target. 
Okay, so we're trying to clarify for ourselves. Say, yes, I'm starting to think about the target more clearly because that in turn helps us to be more, um, more effective and more purposeful toward the goals that we now see that we have. What are the outcomes? What are the, remember the, do it with me. Yeah, I'm watching, do it with me. <laughs> what, what do they know, right? What can they do? What skills? And this can be practical skills, thinking skills, and relational skills. So what do we know? What can we do? And what's in our hearts? Character, attitudes, okay? So all of those things come into sharper focus when we have more and more clarity about our goals. So Anna's gonna, Anna and Melinda are gonna take us into that in those next states. Well, I think that what we're going to do, we'll take our break now before mm. we transition, because we're mm. going to do an activity together mm -hmm. uh, when we get back. I need a pen and pencil, paper. Yes. Or pen. Doesn't matter. A writing utensil and a piece of paper. Yes. But we'll take a 10 minute break. Mm -hmm. And then we will jump into that exercise when we get back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, good fun. Okay, I hope you've written step-by-step -step instructions. Now we're gonna go on a walk with me to my kitchen. Here we go. Welcome to my kitchen. Okay, so what I would like to do is I would love for Claudia, can you help us with your instructions to make a cup of tea? Yeah, um, buy a box of tea. Okay, wait one second. Buy a box of tea. Hmm. Okay, cool. I have a box of tea. Uh, take a bag from inside and put it in a clean cup. Take a bag from inside and put it in a clean cup. Okay, uh, fill a small pot with clean water and bring it to boil. Fill a small pot with clean water and bring it to boil. I'm gonna use my kettle because my stove is hosting a, light, a lamp. It's okay. <laughs> Okay. Doing so well, my goodness. All right. So when the water boils, uh, put it inside the cup that holds the tea bag. Okay. Here's my cup that's holding the tea bag. Okay. When the water, water boils, you put the water inside. Okay. You can see my blue kettle over there mm -hmm. is faithfully boiling the water. You can do it, Melinda. Thanks. It's coming. It takes it some minute. Are you guys following along with this? Your instructions are similar, yes or no? Close, okay, okay. Good thing I have the Dilma extra strength 
mm. black premium Ceylon teas for our demonstration today. Mm. This is my commercial break. If you'd like a refreshing cup of tea, it's pretty <laughs> yummy. It's getting warm. I can feel it. I didn't count the fact that the kettle was going to take a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you can sing for us. You can sing for us? You can. Oh, I can. Oh, well, I <laughs> yeah, don't while I wait. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the water is hot, and what do I do? I'm sorry, tell me again. Uh, you can pour it inside the cup. Pour that it holds the tea bag. The yeah. Okay. <clears throat> now you wait for some minutes. Okay. What happens after some minutes? Uh, it will cool down enough that you can add sugar if you want. If you don't, okay. you can drink. I can add sugar. If I want. Yeah, okay. after some minutes. <laughs> after some minutes. Okay, well, it's, here is the process so far. Is that looking like tea? It does. It could be a bit uh, more water inside. More it's water. Okay, okay. Yeah. I can put some more water in. How about now? Is that good? Depends on how strong you want your tea, but yeah, it looks pretty good for me. Okay, what color should it be? Uh, if it's black tea, I, I think should be this dark. It's okay. This is good. Okay, and I, I think can put so. sugar if I want. Does it matter how much? Uh, yeah, depends on your taste. <laughs> okay, I'll put some. I'm gonna put some sugar in. Here we go. Okay. Now you stir it. I stir it. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> you can use a spoon. Oh, okay. <laughs> Here's a spoon. Okay. So now it's ready for you to drink. Okay. Oh, it's hot, but it's delicious. <laughs> mm. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. You're welcome. Whenever I need help. It's a, it's a lovely cup of tea. Okay. <laughs> Tell me, did somebody else have some different instructions? Maybe. I can. Uh, someone says, Miriam, you use loose leaf. Oh. What's the difference with, with using loose leaf? I have some loose leaf tea here. I have this tea. I have this tea is loose leaf. What's the difference with that, Miriam? Well, you get more of the flavor. More flavor? Is the process the same? No, because you have to use a strainer. Oh, a strainer. I use a small uh coffee pot a teapot oh, a teapot i have one of those here yeah with the strainer exactly exactly yeah okay and, and how much tea would i use for something like that uh, i use like a uh a, a, well a big spoon for one measure it depends on the on the tea Big no, 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 oh. no. Oh. No, no. Okay. No, not that. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. Well, one of, one of these versus yes, one can of be these. like that. No. Uh, for one person, the, the tea, the spoon, and for two people, the other. For a full oh. pot. For a full pot. Okay. Great. So you see, uh, there's some some <laughs> variations. No sugar. There's some variations. Yes, yes. Okay. We don't want a big a big big spoon like this. We want to make sure that we specify, right? 
Some people said uh, they, they no sugar. Okay, I understand no sugar, that's fine. Um, what about, does anybody like milk in their tea? Anybody like milk in their tea? Yeah, oh, there's lots of people who like milk in their tea. I see those hands. I, I personally like milk in my tea, but uh, for Claudia, Claudia, you didn't tell me to put any milk in it. I didn't know which kind of tea you'd make. For black oh. tea, yes. For herbal tea, I don't usually take oh, milk. Oh, so. so it matters. Yeah, herbal tea with yeah. milk. Blend. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So, so it matters what tea we're using. It matters the time. It matters the temperature of the water, the amount of tea, the amount of sugar. Oh, somebody's like, I don't even like tea. <laughs> That's fine, I get that. So the point is though, the objective that we all did together was the same objective, right? And all of you probably made it a very different way. And some of you probably forgot steps, like I'm not picking on you, Claudia, but you said stir it. You expected me to know that I should use a spoon and not my finger. Okay, now that's okay. That's just because we're working on the process. And the process of writing instructions to get to our end result, we can sometimes forget different steps and not because we, we don't know the process. Claudia very clearly knows the process of making tea. But what happens is sometimes we, we are familiar and we think that uh, that's the way or it's just common knowledge. And this can happen with our training sometimes. We think, oh, uh, I, I know what I'm doing. They should understand and know what I'm doing. And we forget some of the details or we think it should be obvious, but sometimes we actually really need to, to put that in there. And then some of you said, I don't even like tea, right? How would you evaluate, uh, let's see, Yuli, how would you evaluate if this is a good cup of tea? Trying it. Trying it, okay. Mm, what else should I evaluate? I don't know. I'm not a tea lover, but <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe um, with the color or something. I don't know. Okay, the color. Good. Good. But what if I was in India? Would this be a cup of tea in India? No, I see Natalia and Daniel. They're shaking their heads. No, what's wrong with my cup of tea? that we just made. Claudia showed me how to make tea. This is tea. We said, make a cup of tea. I made a cup of tea, but you're going, no, in India, this is wrong. What's missing from my tea if we were going to India? You are, you are missing a lot of things. You are missing the, the tea that is like, um, I don't know how to say that is, uh, Spices? Yeah, like they have seeds. some special tea, the seeds, and they have some also like cardamomo, anise. They are Cardam special things that you need to boil with milk and that tea, and it's very thick. And then you will serve in a little cup, not that big. Okay. A little cup like this? Yeah. Okay, so in India, if I had an Indian on my school, he would say to me, Malinda, no, this is very wrong, right? Your cup of tea, but it's not good. <laughs> That's right. No spices, right? You are to be wrong. This is not a cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm using all the wrong ingredients. Yes. I'm doing the wrong process. And if I was a British, a lovely Brit, this is an abomination of the nations, right? This is not a lovely spot of tea. 
This is, oh, it's brown water, water, it's brown water, right? Because <laughs> British, right, they have a very lovely specific way in which the order and the temperature and how long and how much and which kind it must be approved by the queen right it must be twinnings so as you can see the outcome or our objective is the same but depending on who you are where you're from will will change the perspective of how you meet the outcome okay what are some things in common between british tea Indian chai and the cup that we made. What is the same? You can put it in the hot chat. Hot water. Hot water, yes. Hot water, we, we have to have hot water. Okay. They need a glass to drink it. You have to have some kind of <laughs> glass. It doesn't matter. You can't pick it up in your hands. Yes. Good. What else do I need that's the same? Uh, you need to warm it up or boil it. Yeah, many, many places so I need the water, but not only is the water essential, it's, it's hot. Now, where I come from in the south of America, you don't actually make the water hot from the <laughs> kettle or the stove. You use the sun. We put it in a jar. We make sun tea with sugar and we put it out on the patio. And the sun makes the tea for us. My dad used to do that growing up. So if you can't boil the water, you could do it through the sun. But it's still tea, right? And you need, I see Michelle says, you, you need the very core essence or our very thing that we need, which is actually our tea, right? These are all the essential ingredients. So in order to make tea, Claudia says we have to go and get it. Yeah. It's so important. We can't make tea without tea. The leaves, the, the essential ingredients, we can't make it without water. Okay? And, and we can't drink it without a cup. So there's some core elements and things that are common to all of these Mm -hmm. all of these things and that's what we're trying to give you with objectives we're trying to help you write core elements that are the same for for everything but and you will be able to evaluate did claudia talk about water yes she did did claudia talk about tea yes she did did claudia talk about making the water hot Yes, she told me to put it in a cup. So those are poor things. And those are non-negotiable for making tea. Okay, but how you make the tea, right? How is up to every individual, every culture. Every culture has its own way. And this is the same with a lot of the processes that we're working with in the U of N. Right, so a DTS that's run in India is going to look very different than a DTS run in Brazil, run in Argentina, run in America, run in Jordan. And the tea here in Jordan, I want you to know that one key essential ingredient for tea here is sugar. Basically, they have to boil the sugar inside the tea kettle on the stove or else there's so much sugar, it never dissolves. So actually you're having sugar water with a, with a dash of tea <laughs> and maybe some mint if it's the season, yeah. So, uh, so every culture would evaluate this cup of tea differently. And they would say, no, that's not, no, Miss Melinda, I'm sorry, keep telling you this is not a cup of tea, okay? Uh, and they would say it so politely, right? But, but it is a cup of tea, but what are we allowing for people to do when we multiply things? Are we giving them access to the key ingredients, to the core things that they absolutely have to have, mm -hmm. and then saying, be free, use your cultural expression, use your cultural identity to adapt 
what you have for the nations. And tea is a great example because every nation has a way in which they do that. So we're not telling you when you're writing outcomes, we're not telling you how to run a school. The outcomes help us to understand the boundaries, the boundaries with which we operate in and the essential things that we need in order to get to that goal. And what you wanna do is instead of telling your next school leader, hey guys, this is tea. This is what tea tastes like. It's really good. Here's my tea bag. And then you give it to your next school leader. And you say, here, make a cup of tea. And then they put that tea bag in their cup. And then they take their water and they pour water into that tea, right? What's gonna happen to my tea now? What's gonna happen to my tea in here with my pre-used tea bag? Is that gonna be tea? You. No, it's gonna be diluted, but, but is it still tea? Well, yes, it has all the essential ingredients. It has a tea bag, it has a receptacle, it has water. But what's the difference? The difference is, is I don't understand the process, right? And so when you're passing things on, you're passing your school on to somebody else. Don't give them just what you know. Teach them how to go back mm -hmm. to the cupboard and start the whole process. And that's what we're trying to help you with thinking through these objectives, how to go to the tea cupboard. Anytime you want, you can make a cup of tea and you can pass the skills and the knowledge and the character on to other people without having to reuse the same tea bag if you understand the process right so we're teaching you the process of writing outcomes the process of evaluating and thinking through your courses so that you can actually do it step by step think about it ahead of time and then actually give away the core things and then release people into their giftings, release them into their culture so their culture can be expressed. Even if we think, ew, I don't even like tea, or ooh, I don't know if, if I can put that much sugar in my tea, or oh, I love the spices, right? We want to allow the nations to express themselves. The, the non-negotiable elements those we wanna make sure that we give away and we communicate clearly, we communicate with great heart. But anything else is culture and we don't wanna just pass on our culture. We wanna pass on the core things, the elements. And that's why you guys have been uh, looking at how do you write these things, okay? So let me ask you this, why? So if we're talking about the purposes behind things, why would I train somebody What's our value, the heart, let's evaluate, the heart of tea making. What would be, where would we come from with why I would want to make a cup of tea? Michelle, why would I make a cup of tea? Soothing, okay. What's, what's maybe a value, hydration, Ooh, sometimes. What's a value, guys? Go ahead and put in the chat. What's a value? Social, okay, sharing with others. What else? It could be stomach issues. Stomach issues, yes, you could help with digestion. They have a very special tea here for that. Pleasure, good. How about the value of serving others? Thank you, Yuli and hospitality, yeah, friendship, absolutely. We mm -hmm. wanna learn how to be hospitable, right? If we were running a, a, a hospitality course, one of the key things we would teach people to do is the heart of serving, right? And I would wanna serve and cater to your preference. And I would wanna know what do you like in your tea? How do you drink your tea? 
how is this applicable in this situation? So if I look at just the T example as an example of, of writing outcomes and thinking through things, I miss the character aspect. I miss the heart. It's not just a cup of tea for a cup of tea's sake. It's for friendship. It's for pleasure. It's to honor. It's for a servant. It's for all of these things to care for each other, to soothe, maybe if you have a sore throat, right? There's, there are values behind that. So when I ask someone to make a cup of tea and you think, man, it's hard to, to write character outcomes. It's hard to evaluate those. Well, what things, what's behind it, right? Most places are hospitality. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm going too fast. I got excited. Let me drink some tea. So this is our illustration. Tell me some things that you see through this illustration. Okay, tell me some things that you see through this illustration. Maybe, Carlinia, we can just go into our group. Let's go into our groups and you guys can discuss a little bit about this illustration and talk about the outcomes and okay. how this illustration relates, okay? Okay, for how long, Melinda? Uh, five minutes. Okay, just a minute. There we go. Uh, did you hear me or was I muted? It would be great to have some of your feedback. And from this, uh, from that. Quiero tener algo de feedback de esta última ilustración. Luego podemos ver. A gente pode revisar algumas outras coisas. I'm sorry that the time in the group was short. Okay, I can share. Um, we really like the example of the tea because it really helped us to understand uh, how the process is also in our schools that we need to give freedom to the people to express what they have learned in different ways and not just put like uh, in a box like we see, but uh, just to give the freedom, but there are some Element, elements that need to be there that are the basis that we need to focus that they are there but the other things uh, they have the freedom to express themselves and to express the knowledge that will be no expressing the same way than me or than other people so just to give that freedom I think will uh, be very good for all the students and for us. Thank you, Natalia. Someone else? 
é, o nosso grupo, a gente foi, foi muito legal, porque eu estava compartilhando com eles que eu comecei lá na mineradora, né? Para extrair o caulim, para poder... Aí tem os caminhoneiros, eu pensei na atividade anterior. Então, eu fui lá desde a extração da matéria-prima. Aí a Melinda me quebrou com um copo de vidro, porque a minha preparação era para uma xícara de porcelana. Mas na preparação em si do chá, é interessante porque eu sou de uma cidade muito pequena, então eu já pensei em ir no quintal, pegar uma folha de capim cidreira e amassar e colocar na água e ferver junto, né? enquanto eu acho que a maioria pensou no saquinho, mas é e uma coisa que a Fran falou é que que é verdade é que na nossa cabeça é muito óbvio né as receitas são óbvias e é tipo assim é, é assim que se faz é rápido se você parar para pensar em como se faz uma xícara de chá para você vai ser óbvio só que o óbvio é diferente em diversas partes do mundo e uma coisa que o Ulisses falou que é muito interessante é como a gente chegar no mesmo resultado, né? Nós temos o mesmo alvo, mas cada um tem um processo diferente, cada um tem uma maneira diferente, né? Um jeito diferente de, de caminhar até chegar naquele alvo. E como a gente consegue juntar esses jeitos, essas maneiras, essas culturas, para que juntos a gente chegue no mesmo objetivo, né? E nesse processo existe renúncia, é, existe aquele abrir mão, existe o valorizar o outro. E isso é muito interessante. Foi bem legal, Melinda. Muito obrigada. Thank you, Diana. Ok, one more. Some more feedback, please. In our group, my groupmates, okay. they prefer coffee. So they were complaining about that. I am okay with tea. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But uh, what we talked about was uh, the example you gave about just pass on the bag of tea mm -hmm. to the next leader. And maybe you can have kind of tea, but you lose flavor. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's like the word in English, dilute. I don't know if, but uh, diluted. Yeah. Diluted. And sometimes we do that. And you just pass on the same bag of tea, like copy me, do the same. And if you keep passing on and passing on and the final result, you have something very different from original. And also uh, that sometimes we depend on the tea bag. Like if I am in charge, I, I, now you're going to run the next school. I, I asked to the previous leader, please give me the tea bag. <laughs> and Danielle and And Michele, we were talking about it, that we should stimulate people to think by themselves and our staff even to come up with new ideas or new ways that they can input and don't depend on the like the experiences of others. Brilliant. Those are some fabulous principles from that. I think... Um, Some things I want to highlight from, from what you've said is that, you know, some of you don't like tea and, or you, and that's okay because then we have the freedom to create new programs. You know, this is, I don't, uh, this school just doesn't fit right with our group, with the people that we want to reach. Uh, and so we have the creativity that God has given us to be able to, to create coffee. Yeah, we could be running the wrong thing. We could be running a tea school and everybody likes coffee. Well, okay, so this allows us to then also evaluate. Uh, are we running even the correct program? Um, as well, there are templates. There are templates there that are out there for us because we have essential core things that must be in all of our training programs. We need knowledge, we need skills, we need character or attitudes. What what's it, someone should be like. And these templates can help us and they're not there to limit us. They're not there to tell us how to do things. They're there to guide us and to lead us to the end goal. 
And then we put our personal flavor in those things. Also, with templates, there can often be some really clear instructions, right? Make tea. It's very clear and it's clear that there are non-negotiables, okay? There are things that are essential. We must have the non-negotiables and we must not move from those boundaries. Those boundaries are often the word of the Lord to the U of N. And so we cannot move those boundaries. For example, I run a Bible core course. One of our boundaries is to read the whole Bible. I cannot change that just because I don't want to, or it's hard, or it takes a lot of time and effort. That is, a, that is an essential core boundary for our course. And there are those boundaries that are often words of the Lord. And there's a framework in there. Now, how I read the Bible, I could read it straight from Genesis to Revelation in 72 hours. I could read one chapter a day for all of the days. Probably wouldn't finish it. I could, you know, there's many ways how, but the goal remains the same. And the boundary for getting there, like, is to get to that goal. And how we get there can, it, can be adapted. So one thing that can often cause confusion when we're training others is how do we know when they can start doing different kinds of tea? You know, so we, we, we showed a very simple illustration of black tea. And it's a very simple process. And those are the core things, water, cup, tea bag or fresh tea, which would be amazing. And we want people to master the basics, the foundations, before we move on to more complex. You know, they have these fancy teas now that you put in a thing and they like bloom. And then you have like the South Africans who do this amazing like rooibos latte that just blows my mind with cinnamon and honey. It's delicious, right? So like before you move on to like making latte art on top of your, your matcha uh, Starbucks latte, you really want to master the core essentials of tea, right? Of tea making. And these things, these mastered skills then allow us to have, like Lisa was saying, that platform that we can build off of, that we can become creative. We can encourage the unique qualities uh, of the people that we have with us. We want, to, we want to encourage their creativity, but yet at the same time, they have to master the foundation, they have to master those skills. And so I wanna move into looking at some of our outcomes that you guys have written, because what you did with those is you, I've looked at a few of them and you did a good job with, with, uh, with the way that you organized your thoughts and you put them into categories and you guys are doing really good in the process. But now that we've had this thought with T, very simple, we see the steps. Maybe we can go back and evaluate um, how are we doing with what we've said? Are we, have we missed any steps? Is there a thing, uh, I read a few that said the, the student should be able to. Well, no, they shouldn't be able to, they must, or they must not. Right, so thinking about some of these things, is it, do we just wish that they would? Uh, do we hope that they would? Or are we planning, right? Step by step, step one, get a tea bag. Step two, boil clean water, right, et cetera. And making sure that we're writing them in such a way that it's clear that they can actually accomplish those within the time frame that we establish. So the outcomes that we talked about as well, 
that are hard are, are character ones. And after we get back into our groups and evaluate our homework, what I wanna do is I wanna just give a couple of examples of some character outcomes that are more universal um, because I realize those are, are harder for us to think about and to write. And you guys did a great job with that. Um, so we will, we will look at, I want you to go back into your groups and look at some of your examples in your homework. And I want you to think about, can this be more specific? Is this a, is this a non-negotiable or is there another way to express this? And, and so I want you to just think about that with your, with your group, looking at some of the ones that you've made and talk about now that you understand a little bit more of step-by-step step, the process, look at where your outcome would be. Would that be in the middle of the steps? Would that be at the end? Is that an end goal? What did you, did you need clarification of some things? Like where you said stir, okay, well, with what, right? So asking some of those questions of the things that you've already done, okay? How long is Melinda? Um, we, we can do 10 minutes with this one so we can have time to talk and look at some of those. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Gabi, você está no grupo da Ana? Welcome back, everyone. Um, I would love to again hear some more of your feedback from your time in your groups, please. And thank you. Jimmy, I haven't heard from you today. How's it going? We share with us some of your feedback. Um. Sí, bueno, no, muy interesante todo. Um, creo que es muy clave que nosotros entendamos la forma, la manera y el diseño que tenemos como, como original, como Universidad de las Naciones. Eh, y creo que es interesante entender que somos diferentes también como... Eh, modelo en cuanto a otras naciones eh, creo que algo algo especial es poder comprender eh, qué cosas nos hacen diferentes y, y qué cosas y, y eso entonces trae un estilo trae una unción diferente a lo que nosotros hacemos eh, qué cosas se pueden negociar, como tú dices, eh, pero qué cosas eh, al, al entenderlas y al vivirlas nos hacen diferentes en, en, eh, en cuanto a universidad. Me parece muy, muy lindo y muy puntual el, eh, esta mañana en lo que hemos aprendido. Gracias a ti y a, y a Lisa, Linda. Thanks for your feedback, Jimmy. Someone else we haven't heard from yet today, this morning? 
Elizabeth. Uh, oh, I see Elizabeth. Eh, bueno, algo que hablábamos también es como esta mañana fue una clase muy como descriptiva, pero al mismo tiempo fue una clase que tocó las tres, las tres áreas de la Universidad de las Naciones, que es la mente, el corazón y la habilidad. Y es como, es una parte muy ilustrativa, pero al mismo tiempo llegó a nuestro corazón y es muy práctica para aplicar. Se puede aplicar y nunca olvidar como la ilustración del de té. Eh, también que nos, eh, bueno, personalmente a mí me gustó mucho cuando si se está olvidando la forma de hacer el té o si, o si es, pero no completamente con toda su fuerza, hay que regresar a la caja. Y realmente en la caja están las instrucciones, está todo, ¿no? Y es realmente pienso que es nuestro... Es algo muy práctico para los jucumeros, es siempre regresar a nuestra fuente, siempre regresar a la primera voz. Y es, como dije, es algo que tocó las tres áreas y pues fue bastante interesante para nosotros. Thank you. Gracias, Elizabeth. Uh, I thought I saw Tulio, did you want to say something? Uh, yes. I have already said, but <laughs> in my group, Daniel asked me to, to share. We were talking about the, the objectives in the school and we came up with a question. Maybe you can help us. Is that Great. when I am playing in my school, every knowledge must lead to a skill and then to an attitude? Or can I have maybe attitudes that are not connected with a knowledge? Because I, what I was thinking, and Michelle asked that, that sometimes she doesn't think in the knowledge first because it seems that the knowledge is more important than others. And we are talking that it's not, mm. that is more important, but I cannot put a knowledge just because I want a knowledge, right? Every knowledge I put in my, in my forms must lead to something, to an mm. attitude and a skill. But sometimes I could, I don't know, start backwards. I say, I want to, my I want my students to have this skill. Mm -hmm. But how do I give them this skill? I need to start with a knowledge that they know why. I, but our question is, is it every, everything that I include in my school, in my planning, must be connected with the other two? I mean... Every knowledge must lead to a skill and an attitude, or every skill must be connected with a knowledge and to an attitude. That was our question, and our time was up. <laughs> and we, we were, yeah. Great discussion, guys. Fabulous questions. Excellent job. So some of our skills and some of our knowledge are going to be what we call summative or evaluated at the end, okay? Some of our knowledge, some of our skills and our attitude will be evaluated weekly, okay? So you have some overarching goals that you would build on each week to move towards that. And the point, even with, with uh, your attitude or character, is that we are looking for consistency. So sometimes if we're introducing a very complex skill, say inductive Bible study, we want them to know Bible study by the end of the school. But maybe in the first three weeks, we want them to master one small skill of observation. So it's not either or, okay? It's yes to your question and no, it's both. Some skills can only be evaluated at the end. 
with smaller skills that lead up to that. Some, some evaluation for uh, our character or our attitude will be general Christian principles. And that's what I wanna show you some here in one minute because every classroom has a general, uh, we have same values and principles that we would like. Lisa, please join in. I thought you were raising your hand. I can't hear you. Okay, you're muted. Sorry, yeah, before you switch gears, I wanna follow up, but yeah, finish your train of thought. Oh, okay. So, so some things are summative and some things are, are weekly, but yes, we do mm -hmm. ideally want all of the knowledge to be underpinning or laying the foundation mm -hmm. for the skills. But not always does every, every attitude link in directly with that. S most are general principles uh, or general um, values that we want people to be like uh, as Christians. And then we would add some specific ones to mm. our particular courses, depending on what our courses require. That's right. Do you want to want to add to that, Lisa? Yeah, I I love the question that you had, Tulio, and your group, and I think it's a good discipline mm -hmm. to start with wherever you start. If you start with a skill, challenge yourself and say, what does someone need to understand in order to do that, and then ask yourself, what kind of an attitude or value do they need to have to use the knowledge and skills in a way that disciples nations, in a way that builds up others, in a way that demonstrates God's character? And what Melinda's pointing out is you may end up with four or five character qualities or values or attitudes that you're working on for the whole school. But challenge yourselves that for every thing you identify as an outcome for your students to be able to take that role in the marketplace or in a WAM setting, try to have a complete set. What would they need to know? What would they need to be able to do? And what do they have in their hearts? So do that for all of them. And then you'll see where um, several sets of knowledge and skills have a character quality in common. Mm -hmm. And so you may end up uh, consolidating, putting your list back together, mm -hmm. but start with that process because it makes us think and not miss important elements. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a great question and a really important discipline for us and in our course registration forms we're asked to identify these things and we're asked to spell them out and so that's where if we're just using a tea bag from another school leader we don't have the full benefit that they did of thinking that through and being really clear in what we're trying to accomplish. Because when we have that clarity, then there's room for the creativity yeah. without ending up, you know, hitting the wrong target. <laughs> so it's a discipline I encourage you to take for every school mm -hmm. that you lead, even if it's already written into the form A, the registration, do it with your staff for yourself. Mm -hmm and ask the questions again so that you have that fresh clarity and revelation uh, because that is what helps us to lead well. Mm -hmm. So great, great question. And Melinda pointed out the important principles for us. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Love teamwork. Yeah. It's fabulous. Thank you for that. So um, I, I want to, before we move, before we close, I just want to give a couple examples of, of attitude 
And I want to talk about them because it, they're, I find them the most abstract and a little bit difficult. And, and somewhere inside of us, we have a compass of, of how this should work. And we kind of get the idea. But then uh, oftentimes my experience with that is that it's, it's quite subjective, right? Oh, Carlinia, she's a great student. She's fine. She's done lots of schools. I don't, I don't really know. I'm not, who am I to tell her what, what character, what attitude things that she should continue to grow in? I don't, I mean, she's doing good. I'll, I'll work on, uh, I'll work on someone else who's having some, some problems because it's super easy and obvious and they can use discipleship. But what about our quality students? How can we be less subjective and more deliberate and more clear in our discipleship for people in any phase of their life, in any part of their walk, in any school that we have, because our schools are our quality level at higher education, and we want to draw people into excellence in their in their attitudes and in their character as well. So I I want to Carlene, can we put up those can we put up those examples here? I just wanted to show you a few examples. Specifically in the area, I took this off of one that we, we used to use. So these are, are from the area, like we break things down into, into uh, ministry, like qualities that we wanna see in people who minister, like what they're gonna be ministers. And then we have um, also just plain like attitude one. So this is an attitude outcomes specifically in the area of classroom and homework. Okay, so we, we run schools and we want people to, to have uh, specific attitudes related to the classroom. Okay, and so I know that I want my student to, to be open, but if I've never written an objective that says, exhibit or display openness and humility in times of application, then how can I expect that from them? I haven't communicated it. I haven't thought about it. I haven't given them anything to work with specifically. Um, another one that we wrote there is constructively participates in classroom dis discussion. Well, we want people to, to uh, share. We want people to explain. Carlinia, we're on a different, um, you're in the group breakdown on your screen. We want them to be able to constructively participate. And we know that sometimes people don't. But if we've never clarified that that's what we want from people, um, then we're going to be subjective in that. Um, because we're defining clearly that they're being constructive in their participation. Sometimes we have people who aren't so, so constructive. And, and so we can ask questions. And what these character or attitude things help us to do is look at all the tools and all the areas in our school. That we look at classroom, we look at teachability, we look at stewardship and finances, fear of the Lord relationships and then in ministry and teamwork we're training people to be ministers in in the workplace or wherever we're training them to work in these things so we want to look at how can we do these kinds of things in intercession and worship team dynamics uh evangelism and ministry so or like specific to our our schools one of the ones that's specific to say the BCC is that they present the material with integrity, that it's their own material. They didn't copy it, plagiarize it, something like that. So, so here I wanted to give you some examples because if Carlinia is the most amazing person in the whole wide world, but she's not participating, I can ask her, hey, Carlinia, is everything okay? you have a lot of really great things to to share with us and and i noticed that you're you're not participating Are, is everything okay 
how are you doing? <laughs> She's saying, yes, everything's fine. This is an example, you know? So what it does for us as a staff is allows us to, to open conversation with our, with our people, our one-on-ones. Hey, um, I noticed that often you've misunderstood the assignments, but you're not asking any questions. Is there some way that I can help you? Um, and what it does is it allows us to observe what's happening in our class and ask questions to help draw people uh, towards the goal and the objectives in their personal growth. And so we wanna to try to define some of these things that we do we, somewhere in there in our mind, we know, oh, I want them to be like Jesus. Okay, well, what, what does that mean? Well, Jesus was generous. Yes. We want to be able to see them demonstrate it, right? To, 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 dem to do these things, not just because of what I say they demonstrated it, but we want to see them in growing measure, okay? Moving towards consistency. Not just like accidentally, I'm accidentally generous. No, I'm deliberately practicing uh, moving in, in these areas, in the area of consistency. And that's the goal is to be consistent, not to be perfect. Okay, we're not expecting people to be perfect. People come in in, every, in different areas and different stages of their lives. But we want them to demonstrate consistency in these areas and maybe they're not aware and so writing very clear personal outcomes personal growth outcomes for your students helps them to know what do you expect and how should I grow and what areas can I grow and what areas am I doing well in and I need to celebrate I, I celebrate that I, I've, I've really put this in my life Right, and, and we wanna clarify these things and it brings security to not only us as a staff, but also to the students. They know it's clear what we're asking as well as it calls us to a higher standard. Yeah, we're gonna ask these things of our students. Are we modeling them? Are we doing them? Are we... Uh, are we actually even requiring anything from ourselves to grow uh, as in our character and in our attitudes towards things? So, so I wanted to just give a few of those examples and we can send more examples if you'd like out to the group. But the idea is that there, these ones are kind of more, uh, I found them more difficult to, 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 to make because um, yeah, it was a bit more abstract and a bit more challenging. So. I just wanted to give some examples, Lisa. So as Melinda has been explaining, when you're looking at helping someone to grow in their character, we want to give clear goals mm -hmm. so that it's not an accusation. It's mm -hmm. not me saying, well, I don't think you're teachable. That's right. Well, that... <laughs> That, that's hurtful, that's personal, that's, yeah, but I think I am, you know, it just creates tension and argument. Mm -hmm. And so saying, okay, if I want someone to be teachable, what would they do or say that helps me uh, see that they are teachable? Mm -hmm. And so it's taking that step backward and saying, what does teachable sound mm -hmm. like? What does it mm -hmm. look like? What are the behaviors that I can demonstrate myself and model? Mm -hmm. What are the kinds of things that I can explain as an example of what I'm looking for? What are the things that I can then go back and draw attention to mm -hmm. and say, I see that you're doing this. Well done. Mm -hmm. I see that you're not doing this. How can we help? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, that's the question you want to ask yourselves. Two questions is why? Why do I want them to be teachable? Well, it shouldn't be because then they don't argue in class, right? <laughs> it, it's not about us. 
it it goes back to the outcomes of your course and saying why why does a bcc student need to be teachable do they yeah well yes because if the outcome of a bcc is someone is able to rightly divide and present the word of god that has to come from personal connection and application to the word of God. Therefore, they have to develop a teachable spirit. And that becomes one of my primary character outcomes for a BCC. Mm -hmm. and, and so having a reason why you're holding those character standards that your students are aware of and they go, That's oh, right. wow, yeah. I thought I was a hot shot preacher and I was going to get a big following. Oh, I'm being discipled and held accountable mm -hmm. to develop a teachable spirit mm -hmm. see and so it isn't you're not teachable or you are teachable it's you're consistently yeah and that's where there's a hundred ways to define teachability what do you look for in your students mm -hmm. they, uh, what we're looking for here is uh personal openness about mm -hmm. what you are learning and the application that you're making we expect mm -hmm. to see that in conversation with students and in your written journals. Mm -hmm. When you are um, uh, invited to consider one of your responses or attitudes that you listen carefully mm -hmm. and dialogue about implementation. Do you see, mm -hmm. you can spell out mm -hmm. how you want people to be growing toward, as Melinda pointed out, it's not perfect. We're not looking for mechanical i filled in the boxes and i'm perfect on the outside there's there's a process but they have a goal mm -hmm. so as melinda's been saying it's it's probably one of the most important challenges for us to be clear and to say what are those qualities that i need to be sure that i am developing in order for these people to be the people of God in those in those roles that they are going to take, how do I bring that down into clarity so that they have something to work towards? Mm -hmm. um, so thinking about, describe to yourself, what does it look like? What does someone do or say if they're maturing in that quality? Sometimes those are good concrete questions for us to ask to help us figure out what do we wanna write as an outcome? Well, and so, that would go straight into evaluation. Like when I evaluate these things, mm -hmm. I'm not giving them a number. Mm -hmm. I am, I'm observing mm -hmm. actions, right? Mm -hmm. Cause remember the belief tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those values, our character and attitude come out of our values. Mm -hmm. And so out of mm -hmm. that comes our actions. Right. And so what I'm doing is I'm observing someone's actions. So if they're teachable, they're able to receive encouragement, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for example, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking for that. And if they're not, then that's an opportunity, what we call an opportunity for growth. Mm -hmm. And so when we evaluate, and Lisa will talk more on evaluation later, how mm -hmm. do we know if these things are, are good? When we evaluate people's uh, attitude towards things, we look for the actions because mm -hmm. we can't know what's inside their hearts, mm -hmm. okay? We look for the actions that show us the fruit Mm -hmm. And then we ask questions to go mm -hmm. back and then, to get them to tell us what do they believe? What are mm -hmm. their values mm -hmm. that they're expressing mm -hmm. in those actions? Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes we're misunderstood too in our actions, right. right? Or our actions aren't really what's in our heart and we don't know another way to do it. Yes. And we just need someone to come along and say, hey, you know what, when I say this, and you, you, you go, yeah, yeah, thanks. Oh, I don't know, maybe, okay. You're not really receiving my encouragement. You know, why is that? What's happening here? And what it does is it opens conversation for discipleship mm. instead mm. of mm. you're not open, you don't receive things, you know? Mm. So, Carlinha. Uma coisa que eu acho muito chave reforçar a nossa cultura latina é o quanto a gente está acostumado a agir de forma subjetiva. Então, é um direito dos alunos receberem aquilo que eles vão ser avaliados. 
Então, não importa se você está trabalhando com o ETED ou em qualquer escola uhum, de segundo nível uhum. para cima, existe um processo contínuo de discipulado. E eles têm que saber isso, eles têm que participar da autoavaliação, eles têm que uhum. saber é, claramente no que, que eu preciso uhum. melhorar. Né? E a gente tem que tomar uhum. muito cuidado com a nossa uhum. cultura, porque muitas vezes a gente fala assim, ah, só está fazendo para ser aprovado. Isso é julgamento. Então, isso demonstra que a nossa atitude está ruim. Uhum. Então, isso que a Melinda estava falando sobre a gente agir com o que a gente vê e fazer perguntas é chave. Porque quando eu fizer perguntas, uhum. eu vou conhecer mais do coração das pessoas. Quando eu fizer provocações de por que, que você sempre reage tão forte na sala de aula, ou por que, que você está sempre atrasando algumas coisas, ou por que você é, não trabalha bem em grupo com tal pessoa. Então, eu ajudo a pessoa a refletir sobre o que está passando dentro dela. E isso é a parte do discipulado, isso é a parte das atitudes que a gente avalia como Universidade das Nações. Então, a gente não parte do que a gente vê só. O que a gente vê abre porta para o diálogo. E é a partir daí que a gente avalia. Então, para quem trabalha uhum. com ETED, isso vale para a ETED. Não é uma coisa para as outras escolas. Né? Então, quando a gente tem só 30% da avaliação em atitudes, em caráter, é por causa disso. Eu tenho que saber no que, que eu estou avaliando, como eu estou avaliando e como a gente vai fazer. Alguns anos atrás, uhum, a, gente, uhum, a gente pegou uhum. a segunda Pedro 1, é, de 5 a 8, e viu tudo que dava para sair dali, sobre fé, virtude, caráter, é, paciência, fraternidade, e transformamos em coisas muito práticas. Uhum. E a gente faz isso, às vezes, em algumas escolas. O que, que a gente pode ter a partir disso? Né? Então, vale a pena. Para a nossa cultura, isso é muito chave. Nós precisamos entender hum, que a gente pode hum, ser atitude. Hum. E que está tudo certo. Fala oi, Aira. Meus amigos. Thank you, Carlinha. Yes. Hum. And it's... It's a high value in lots of uh, um, mm -hmm. cultures. It's not just yours. Many cultures mm -hmm. go around mm -hmm. this area and aren't clear and mm -hmm. uh, try to perform, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we need to be clear. And I mm -hmm. think that's key to this. I think uh, we have, we've run out of time for today. But I want you to reflect between now and Lisa's session about your, your homework that you did. And I want you to revise what you've already done from today's session. We want you to continue to think about it. And we want you to add one new outcome in each of your categories so that now you will have three of each, a knowledge, a skill, and an attitude, okay? So you'll have three of each. They don't always have to connect, but the idea is that you would try to build, okay? Um, and that you're learning how to practice these skills. And then Elise is gonna talk about later on today, having the right tools to actually do this stuff with. So Lisa, do you wanna say anything about this evening session? I am unmuted. Yes, uh, I know in the evenings we can get a little hungry. So I thought to invite you to bring your favorite fresh vegetable. So perhaps some carrots or something that you like to snack on. Uh, the raw ones are going to be healthy. Okay, so bring a fresh vegetable with you. And then for the women, um, I'd like you to bring a, a, a knife and for the men, I'd like you to bring a spoon and then just make sure that you have paper and um, something to write with, maybe something to color with, some kind of a color, okay? Carlinha, eu quero animar todo mundo a fazer suas tarefas, né? Nós somos 35 e nem metade conseguiu, nesses últimos tempos, entregar o que precisava. E como a gente está vendo, a gente está construindo 
um bloco. Quando a gente não consegue, né? Pegando o exemplo que a Melinda trouxe sobre tarefa, quando eu não faço a tarefa, falta conteúdo para eu pôr mais uma peça, para eu poder olhar, ver o que eu entendi, o que eu não entendi, uhum. como é que eu posso aproveitar melhor a aula, uhum. como é que eu posso uhum. saber se eu tenho perguntas ou não. Então, eu queria te encorajar muito a investir um tempinho hoje à tarde. Começa por essa tarefa específica sobre os outcomes e pega sobre os resultados e pega todos eles. Mas, se você tem mais coisa uhum. atrasada, começa dessa e corre para fazer as outras. A gente está colocando mais peso sobre a fundação. A gente está colocando mais coisa para construir a nossa percepção correta como universidade. Então, se você ficou com alguma coisa para trás, vai ficar bambo. E se ficar bambo, vai cair. Ou vai dar um tilt e falar assim, não, mas de onde é que surgiu isso aqui? Como é que eu sei isso? Então, o meu encorajamento é para que você é, invista hoje, de maneira especial, um tempo para essa tarefa específica dos resultados, antes da sessão da noite, já que vocês viram que a gente precisa desse, desse entendimento para a sessão da noite, e tragam as outras tarefas o mais rápido possível, por favor. Amém. And this is part of redeeming education. Right. You may have grown up in a system where homework was irrelevant and a burden. And so homework is, oh, do I have to do my homework? No, but you don't have to. We're, <laughs> we're redeeming homework and saying right. the purpose of homework is personal reflection, personal mastery, saying, I, I think I understand, is this, is this mine now? Is it my understanding? Can I use it? Is it? changing my own heart. Mm -hmm. And so a well-designed homework takes you deeper, makes you stronger. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like the homework isn't worth doing, mm -hmm. that's a problem with the homework. Mm -hmm. And we're certainly open to your feedback. If you feel like, why are you giving us this homework? Mm -hmm. It's not helping. Yeah. But it's part of rethinking. What, why do we do what we do? Is everything moving us toward reaching the goals and the outcome that we have. We asked that question about this training course, trying to model all of these things for you as you work with people you lead at your base or students in your schools. Mm -hmm. So just we're redeeming. The, the world maybe has robbed some of us of our faith in homework <laughs> as an important tool for Holy Spirit. So, yeah, grab hold of it so you can build your life and increase your capacity as leaders. Thank you. All right, thanks, everybody. It's lovely to see you. Be blessed. Ciao, ciao.